Hello there and welcome back to Water Child Tarot. My name is Sarah and thanks for joining me today for this look at two decks from Japan from the Pocketable series of toys and games uh, produced by this company, SYU Creation. Um, I got both of these off of Japan auction sites online and I've talked about uh, my adventures in collecting and shown you a few walkthroughs. Um, this one I wanted to wait. I got this deck first and I wanted to have something in a similar vein to compare it to and then I found this one um, about a month ago. So let's go ahead and get uh, a closer look at each of these and then I'm going to do a side-by-side -side comparison of the cards. Um, so the first thing I'll tell you is that um, these are put out by a game company that specializes in miniature and portable games um, for you know people on the go so you might have games like this that you had on family car trips or things like that i know i had like a tiny little chess set a miniature um uh, connect four i think i had at one point um, so that's the kind of thing we're talking about so this pocketable company um, is not necessarily a tarot uh, producer per se but they do produce miniature games and tarot decks is one of those features. Um, this first deck is the first one that I purchased and it is an anime style deck you can see from the artwork here on the box. Um, it is Pocketable Series number 102 um, and it's published by Worldwide Brand of Compact Games, Japanese version. Um, that's the front of the box. The packaging is uniquely um, tricky and I'll show you the inside of this box in just a second but here's the back so you can see uh, more of the cards here what the back of the cards look like and I haven't bothered to translate this I'm sure it's just you know sort of advertising speak um, this these large characters here spell out the word tarot I know that much um, and yeah um, so that's what this is and then the inside um, comes in a wallet so I'm not going to open this box this box is in less good condition than my other um, deck I have here but um, that's the top you can see 78 so you know how many cards you're getting it is a complete deck not just the, the majors and um, the two wallets that these cards come in are similar this one has a matte finish on it so you can see it's not really throwing any light back in the camera and it has this gold foil style the other thing that this deck came with is a complete booklet so we'll look at that really quickly right here and again you can see one of the cards the sun card from this deck here we have a big um, word tarot on the front and then description and then the inside is in full color on this glossy paper and you have each card with a description and I'm, I'm assuming these are keywords like you know this meaning that meaning maybe a reversal something like that um, so it's fairly uh, complete. I like that they included a, a booklet with a mini deck because um, sometimes that can be hard to work out how you're going to do it. So there you go. There's their telephone number. I don't know if that's still an accurate phone number in Japan, but um, there's all the information, publication information. And for our comparison, we have a similar situation. So here's the outer box. Uh, it's funny because um, this anime style deck on the left, the box only shows cards from that deck. But on our Rider Waite Smith, which is actually an Albano, um, Albano Waite coloration, um, they have this image on the front, um, which looks like it's part of a world card maybe, or part of the temperance card or something like that. I can't quite tell so I don't know where they got this image from um, this is pocketable series number 109 and it has a very similar um, kind of packaging or design on the front here with the word tarot at the top and then the word tarot in English on a wallet which I'll show you in just a second but on the back you can see more of the cards from this actual deck that's in here and this does show the Albano uh, coloration the death card with the red sky um, the moon card with that dark purple, so we know we know which deck this is. And again, SYU Creation is the publisher. 
um, the, the inner wallet, it sort of reminds me of an old style calculator wallet. Um, so that's what it looks like. It's sort of a pleatherette. Um, and this has some the same information on the side, the publisher there. Pocket Voltero, series number 109, SYU Creation. And then on the inside, um, you get this sort of game board. I guess you could slip this out. Um, it's a very tight fit to get this in and out, so I'm not going to take it out again. Um, and it's interesting because this uh, looks sort of like the backs of the Morgan Greer um, with the blue background with, with um, asymmetrical star design. Um, but I don't think this has anything to do with Morgan Greer. I think it's just, you know, meant to be like mysterious or esoteric or something. And then over here you get this contraption, which is four wells for the cards uh, in a little tray that slides out. And so the idea is you would divide the deck into four and then slide the tray back in. Now there's multiple problems with this. Um, one is that not the cards don't fit. Um, and they don't fit unevenly because 78 is not easily divisible by four or evenly divisible by four. Um, and so they kind of stick up and then it's, you know, a recipe for disaster when you go to slide the cards back in and some get stuck here. And then you can either bend them this way or maybe they're sticking out a little bit and you end up bending them when you close this. So really funny packaging again. Um, but I sort of understand what they were trying to do. They just didn't do that great of a job of it. So, but I think this is kind of a method that they use for their other games. So speaking of that, let's take a look here first at the advertising um, booklet that came with this particular deck. And this shows, you know, other decks, or not other decks, but other games that they produce. So here's Othello, um, which is similar to Go. And uh, this comes in the same, it's a wallet style and you can see um, that wallet style behind the, the box there. So this is like a default way that they package these and then they kind of make all the pieces fit in here. Um, but they produce a lot of different kinds of things. Here's something, you know, some kind of a word game it looks like. Um, different kinds of strategy games. Um, I did see one that was Monopoly. This one looks like, you know, some kind of adventure game, tabletop adventure game. But they're all going to be very t tiny. You know, I imagine these pieces are going to be like this big and um, maybe a little bit hard to work with. Uh, some of these um, RPG type tabletop games here. So all different kinds of things that the Pocketable company uh, produces. Here's even more of them. Got Chinese checkers. Which is interesting, they call that diamond. Um, it's this one here. So yeah, there's there's a, a whole suite of things. And then you have, oh yeah, this is the Monopoly one. So it comes with this plastic folder and then all the pieces for the bank and the hotels and um, all the, the cards and stuff like that. I can't imagine trying to miniaturize Monopoly with all those pieces. What a nightmare. Anyhow, there's that advertising booklet, and then this one did also come with a descriptive booklet for the deck. So here we have the sun from the Albano deck, and we have, again, descriptions of each card uh, in Japanese. So there you go, pretty straightforward. All right, let's take a look at our cards and I am going to, to zoom in in just a second, but first I'll show you a size comparison. So this is quite small. I guess this would consider it a, a mini size, I think. I've only had one other mini deck and I got rid of it before I bought these. So my left hand here, I have a tarot in a tin size from US Games and then you have this one, which is much smaller. So there you go. It's about an inch shorter and about half an inch um, less wide. So let's zoom in. Now, on reflection, I seem to have misplaced my magical chopstick, so I will just use a pencil to point out a few things here. Um, one is that the deck on the left is uh, unlabeled in any way, and this deck is in an anime style, but it's based on the Hanson Roberts tarot. So um, Mary Hanson Roberts made a tarot deck in the 70s, I believe, 
um, or it could have been early 80s, I'm not quite sure. And that was based on the writer Waite Smith, but she reinterpreted some images. And then somebody came along, um, some Japanese artist, I'd, unfortunately they're uncredited as far as I know, and they redrew her um, artwork in a Japanese anime style. So this is like an interpretation of an interpretation. Um, here again, as I said before, this is just a miniaturized version of the Albano weight. And we can tell from the colors um, and um, but yeah, basically the colors and the backgrounds used that that's the case. Um, down here, we do have a little tiny copyright on each of these decks. The Albano weight says copyright 1988 US games. So clearly the pocketable company um, was working with US games and you know licensed this artwork or something like that from them. This was at a time when US games had claimed copyright over Frank Albano's work. And again, uh, if you know how that came to be, I would love to know. Um, here we have copyright 1987, so this was put out a year earlier, um, by SYU Creation. So they're the same uh, company that is credited here um, on this deck as being the publisher. So that's kind of interesting. Um, here are the backs of the cards. There are no title or informational cards in here. There's, there's just the booklet and then these backs. So um, the back of the um, anime style tarot has this uh, six pointed Kabbalistic star on sort of a faux, I can't tell if that's like, it looks like waves coming through a portal. Um, it's a little hard to make out exactly what it's meant to be. And then here we have the classic Albano sun, golden sun on a cream background for our miniature Albano deck. So with our um, anime style tarot not having any labels, you really do have to pause and think about who this could be. Um, but I think it's pretty clear if you're familiar with the tarot, you're familiar with the RWS archetypes and how they're drawn and what their symbols are, then um, it's not too hard to figure out uh, who you're looking at in the cards. Um, sometimes it can be a little tricky if you have several cards laid out, some of the kings um, and some of the um, face cards or trump cards look similar um, or could be different characters. But if you if you really look and pick out the detail, you can figure out who it is. Um, I do like the zoomed in look for a tiny card. Um, it's nice to get a little closer to the characters. Uh, everything gets quite small over here in our Albano deck. But I don't have a lot to say other than what I've told you so far, so I'm not going to talk through this walkthrough, um, or at least I don't plan to. Um, and uh, yeah, I just wanted to kind of uh, show off these decks, and I thought it might be nice if you're not as familiar with tarot to show off this one next to one that was labeled so you can see how we're comparing um, the different uh, imagery. I do like that our magician here in the anime style uh, deck is female. And there's sort of bizarre things with nudity that I'll point out um, when we get to those cards. Here's our high priestess. Now here in this deck, this is not based on the Hanson Roberts um, tarot deck, which does show um, a female figure with the uh, lion and not in such a adversarial or battle ready um, type of pose. I do love our hermit. He's very cute and he's reading a book. I have a soft spot for hermits that are reading a book.
This is another card that strays from the Hanson Roberts um, tarot. The Hanson Roberts, and I will link that uh, a walkthrough of that deck down below. Um, I don't have a copy of it, but I did watch a few walkthroughs of this deck, so I'm now familiar with the images. Um, and Hanson Roberts has more Egyptian imagery, like the Rider Waite Smith does, um, and this one kind of deviates a bit. Many of the female figures in the anime style deck are winking at us, like they know something we don't. Again, this death card is different from the Hanson Roberts um, imagery. The Hanson Roberts follows the RWS a, a bit more closely, but I do like this um, Grim Reaper who seems to be disintegrating or appearing out of nothingness. That's kind of a cool effect. So the weird nudity thing I was going to mention, uh, and you, can, you can't quite see it in this star card, um, but the, the nude female fingers don't have nipples, which I don't understand. If you're going to draw naked ladies, draw naked ladies. And if you're not going to draw naked ladies, then that's fine too, but <laughs> pick a lane. I like how the, the yods here have been interpreted as drips of water coming off the moon. And here's a nippleless female figure again. And these uh, flowers in bloom on the rods, or um, they're called rods in the Hanson deck, um, the wands is a trait of the Hanson Roberts. I like having the figures in the four closer. It's always hard to make out exactly what these people are doing. This is another card that deviates from the Hanson Roberts. There's no uh, window in the Hanson Roberts deck. Um, and this kind of messes with my interpretation of this imagery because I like to look at uh, the Eight of Wands as being in alignment with each other. And here they're all over the place, so it's it's disorganized, which um, sort of affects the, the reading. pages in the anime deck are very enthusiastic, um, which works for page imagery.
This Two of Cups is also reinterpreted in the Hanson Roberts, the um, image here of the lion with the wings and the caduceus uh, is present. I like this Three of Cups, they look like they're having a picnic. Here we go from a neutral face in the RWS to the Hanson Roberts, which has more of a pout, and then the anime interpretation of the Hanson Roberts, which is more of a pronounced scowl. So it's interesting to see those kinds of progressions. And I've harped on it before, but it's not always great to be more specific. I like open imagery, images and neutral faces so that I can interpret the card in different contexts for different kinds of questions. This is interesting because you get to see the figure in the seven. You don't always get to see the face. It's usually silhouetted in some way like this one is. And this is an older person, almost looks wizard-like. Here's our enthusiastic page with his fish. It's too bad you can't really see the horses in this deck. Um, everything's so zoomed in, so you lose the um, what the horse is doing. to swords and this sword is giving me King Arthur vibes as it's stuck in this rock here if you're an anime or manga fan I wonder if um, any of these characters in this deck are um, reminding you of any in the series that you are familiar with. I'm not as versed in anime and manga to be able to say, oh, this reminds me of so-and-so. Um, but I'm curious if you have thoughts on that. This Four of Swords is very different. Um, I think it differs from the Hanson Roberts as well. Yeah, it does. The Hanson Roberts has the um, traditional casket set in a church, and this is just a very different choice. This one threw me off. It took me a while to figure out which uh, card this we were looking at here, but you do have nine swords. You've got five in the backpack and you've got four here. So again, very different um, from our traditional RWS card. And again, the 10 also different. I'm sure that um, some folks have trouble with this image. And so it may have been artist choice or publisher's choice to change it.
I do like this Queen of Swords a lot. Um, she looks like she's on a headset, you know, with one of those built-in microphones. I, I know that's not what that is. It's part of her crown, but it's still pretty funny. Um, but she also kind of looks like she's not going to take any shit, you know. She's like, don't even try it. I've got my eye on you. And here is our pentacle suit. Interesting change here. This uh, person is giving a coin to a small child rather than to a beggar. Alright, so that is the last card, our King of Coins, Pentacles. Again, thank you for joining me for this walkthrough. I hope you enjoyed looking at these pocketable tarots, especially this anime style one. Uh, let me know what you thought. Do you have any anime style decks? And if so, I'd love to learn uh, more about them. There aren't a ton of anime style decks on the market, even though there's lots of Japanese decks and tarot is pretty popular in Japan. Um, so I'd love to find out more about uh, either this artist or just anime style decks in general, if you know of any. But I'll leave it there and until next time, uh, be well and I will see you very soon.